This is a little job that's come in recently. It's piping up a Stuart 7A steam plant. The engine's not quite finished, and it's very well made. And the boiler is a Blackgate's boiler, which is one they do plans for, and I think they also do flange plates and the other copper parts. A very nice boiler, complete with a superheater. I frequently give Blackgate's a mention on my videos. A few viewers have asked why I advertise Blackgate's on my videos. I have no connection with them at all business-wise. They're just friends of mine and have been for many years, and they provide a very good service for the model engineer. Some of the piping's actually been done. The water tank is piped, and there was a steam pipe from the wet header to the superheater, but it was positioned far too high. I want it to run like this, down low, where you can't touch it readily. The steam pipe from the wet header to the superheater and from the superheater to the engine will both need to be lagged in string. I show this in part two. Before starting a piping job, it's a good idea to sit back, have a cup of tea and look at the job and plan out how you're going to do it. I've just shown in a previous clip how if the pipe is straight against the boiler, it doesn't look good. In my opinion, a pipe like this needs to follow the curvature of the boiler as closely as possible. This is 532 pipe, 530 seconds of an inch in diameter, and it's quite easy to bend. I'm trying to bend it here to precisely the same radius as the boiler, but if I overbend it, it will work harden. And if you work harden copper, you need to soften it. This means you have to heat it up to a dull red heat and quench it in water. That will re-soften it. But luckily I didn't have that problem. The copper bent very well. With the union nut on the pipe and tightened onto the tap, it's time now to look at the other end. I was lucky really because the original pipe used the other way round, bent perfectly to the dimensions that I needed. This is not always the case. And on this side, I'm doing it from scratch with a new piece of pipe. I like things to be fairly symmetrical where piping's concerned. Random piping fitted without any pre-thought is not a good idea. This is going to look okay, especially when the main steam pipe feed is clad in string. This is a very nice displacement lubricator, beautifully made, made in Switzerland I believe, and available from Blackgates. Time now to make up the gas tank pipe. Some people use one eighth of an inch pipe for this. I always use 530 seconds because it's more durable. It's a bit thicker, it's less likely to break and less likely to block up. So I'm about to silver solder this pipe and the first thing to do when you're silver soldering, and I will repeat this, put the union nuts on the pipe first, put the union nuts on the pipe first. If you want to watch the full video, and there are two or three videos about silver soldering different things on here, just type in silver soldering on a search of my channel. What I'm showing here is the silver soldering process. You need silver solder flux and silver solder itself. This is silver flow 55 with easy flow number two flux. And as you can see with the correct heat, the silver solder flows perfectly all the way around the joint. If either the work is not clean or you don't have the correct flux, or more importantly, if you don't have sufficient heat, this will not be successful. If you're in doubt, watch my other videos. They're quite comprehensive and show it in more detail. So here's the pipe in place, and it fits perfectly. I haven't bothered polishing it up. All the piping is going to go in my acid bath in due course. What I needed to do next was make a suitable adapter to convert quarter by 40 threads per inch to 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. This was a simple piece of lathe work, not worth showing on here. Once the fitting is made, I'm using some Loctite 542, which is thread sealant, as I fit the adapter to the engine be very careful with this thread sealant. If it contacts paint it removes it very efficiently so you notice that I am actually wiping off the surplus before fitting the part. And then simultaneously at the same time, who says men can't multitask, whilst fitting the part I'm wiping off the thread sealant from my other finger with a cloth. And here comes the finger newly cleaned back into shot. And now I'm sure you will not be able to contain your excitement while I show some machining. This is a piece of steel that I turned to fit inside the copper tubing. So as you can see, it goes inside the copper tubing, then the whole assembly fits into the chuck. Stay calm, because any minute now, yes, here we go. Ta-da! Machining. When machining copper, you have to be really careful, it's very soft stuff. That's why I use the inner piece of steel, so I can tighten the chuck jaws without crushing it. Take fine cuts and you'll be okay. Take heavy duty cuts and things will go sadly wrong. 
So here's the end of the machining. I'm just using a file to clean up the outer edge. And here I'm about to use a deburring tool, here it is, to remove the burr from the inside edge of the copper, because this piece of copper tubing needs to be soldered into a slot in a base. Next step, reverse the piece in the chuck. I haven't shown that, but I did. This is not just a repeat of the previous video, this is an entirely new bit. At this point you may be saying, what is he doing here? Turning a piece of copper, this is no good for piping a steam plant. This is almost as silly as the videos he puts on of attractive young women speaking to camera in a seductive way. And once again I'm using the deburring tool to remove the burr from inside the pipe. Before I continue I'll just proudly show the piece of steel that I turned to fit inside the pipe. This has made many of these things. These are condenser oil traps that I sell commercially. This is a special one because it's taller. That's it for part one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.